Hi guys! Today we will check and install the Mutant V2 Universal Tool Swapping System from WAMBAM. You want to know all the details? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, in this video we have the Mutant V2 Universal Tool Swapping System from WAMBAM. The Mutant is a system that allows you to swap your complete hotend assembly with another hotend or with a different tool head quick and easy. For our tutorial we will use a Creality Ender 3. But first, let's check what's included when you order the Mutant V2 kit. The main parts are the fixed plate and the mobile plate. This is the fixed plate. It's the one that will be installed on the printer's carriage. There's a lever on the side to lock the mobile plate and at the top is where all the connections and wires go. The top cover needs to be removed to access all the connectors for the installation. Here we can see the PCB and all the connectors. There are three types of connectors. One that can handle up to 10 amps and is normally used for hot end heaters, for example. Then we have the ones that can handle up to 3 amps and can be used to connect all the components from the hot end like thermistors, fan, leveling sensors and so on. And finally the pogo pins, which are used to connect all the electrical connections from the fixed plate to the mobile plate. And this is the mobile plate. At the top we have the same 10 amps and 3 amps connectors. And under them we have the pads that will connect to the pogo pins on the fixed plate. The mobile plate has several openings to allow the installation of different setups and mounts. To install the mobile plate on the fixed plate is fast and easy. We only need to align the mobile plate on the slot, slide it down and lock it with the side lever. For each plate there is a bag with some accessories. Inside the fixed plate bag we have an instruction sheet, stickers to label each wire and a card to write down the wire configuration. A couple of wham bam stickers, a couple of heat shrink sleeves, a couple of nylon mesh covers, a couple of pneumatic fittings, some M3 threaded heat press inserts, some screws, a small allen key, zip ties and finally a flat and a cross screw drivers. Inside the mobile plate bag we have the same stickers to label each wire and the card to write down the wire configuration, a couple of nylon mesh covers, a couple of heat shrink sleeves, several screws and nuts, a couple of plastic spacers and zip ties. Ok now, Let's start with the installation on our Ender 3 printer. But before that, make sure your printer is turned off. And the first step is to remove the hot end cover. There are a couple of screws we need to take out. And then there are a couple more to remove the hot end. Handle these carefully to avoid damaging the wires. The Mutant fixed plate cannot be installed directly on the carriage, so WAMBAM has a universal plate that can be used instead of the stock Reality 1. An alternative is to 3D print an adapter and keep the stock carriage. There are already some adapter plates for several carriages and the Ender 3 is one of them so we decided to print one of those. To install the adapter plate we first need to remove the top right screw. And then we place the adapter plate. This adapter plate is 3 mm thick, which in our case it was not enough to cover the two metal posts from the carriage. 
With the posts sticking out, the fixed plate would not sit correctly. So we had to print this plate again, but raise the thickness on the slicer from 3mm to 5mm. With the new 5mm thick adapter plate, the two posts are now flushed. Inside the fixed plate bag, you can find the M5 by 30 countersunk screw. This will be used in replacement of the stock screw and will help to secure the adapter plate. Next, get a couple of M3 by 6 countersunk screws to secure the adapter plate. Then place the fixed plate and secure it with the two dome head M3 by 6 screws on the left side and two M3 by 10 screws on the right side. OK, the fixed plate is installed. The electrical connections still need to be made, but first, let's go through the mobile plate installation. Each mobile plate has several holes for different setups. For the stock Ender 3 hot end, we will use these two. To install the hot end, we will need the two M3 by 25 dome head screws and the plastic spacer. The screws go through the hot end and the spacer is placed between the hot end and the plate. To secure the hot end on the plate, two square nuts are used from the back side of the plate. Make sure the screws are correctly tightened and that the hot end is perfectly squared. The other spacer is used between the cover and the plate. Use the stock screws to secure it. And at the back side, use a couple of square nuts. OK, the hot end is installed. You can now place the mobile plate on the fixed plate. If you have a leveling sensor, it can also be installed on the plate like this. In this case, this common support mount for the touch sensor can be used between the cover and the plate, instead of the plastic spacer. The next step is to connect all the wires on the mobile and fixed plates. However, before we can cut the wires, we need to check the length we need to pass the wires on the mobile plate. In this case, all the wires that are polarity sensitive have different colors, so they should be easy to match between both plates. In any case, you can use the provided stickers to label each wire and write down the information on the wire record sheet. Once that is done, we can cut the wires and strip them. For a perfect electrical connection, we used ferrules. A bunch of ferrules and a crimping tool is not expensive and will make this job much better. The white ferrules are for the hot end heater wires that will connect to 10 amp rated connectors. And the purple ferrules are for the remaining wires that will be connected to the 3 amp rated connectors. Match the wires from the mobile plate with the ones from the fixed plate. The screws from the 3 amp connectors are cross type on the fixed plate and flat type on the mobile plate but we prefer the flat screw ones because they provide a better grip. The cross ones are not as good. On our fixed plate, we have here all the stock under 3 hot end wires, next we have the leveling sensor wires, and we included a cable to connect the four wires from the exterior stepper motor. This way, we can install the hot end with a direct drive setup which includes an extruder stepper motor. With all these connections, we still have three slots available for something else. The wires and the nylon sleeve can be secured on the fixed plate with the zip tie. Okay, now that we have all the connections done, 
and the wire secured with some zip ties, we can now close the top cover. If you don't like the extra wires running out of the nylon sleeve, you can get a new cable sleeve to cover all the wires. One important thing you need to do is to move the X carriage all the way to the left and to the right to check if the cable moves along nicely and freely. The extruder stepper motor extension cable that we added needs to be accessible for when we need to disconnect the stock extruder and use the direct drive alternative. On the mobile assembly, we also need to properly secure the wires with zip ties. The plate has dedicated areas for the zip ties. OK, all done. The stock hotend is installed on one of the mobile mutant plates. To place it is this fast and easy. The PTFE tube can be installed back on the extruder. The kit comes with a couple of pneumatic fittings for easy removal of the PTFE tube. You can use those instead if you want, but for this case, we recommend to remove the PTFE tube only on the extruder side and not on the hot end side. And this is how the system looks like installed. You need to redefine the printing area and the home offsets since the X and Y axis coordinates and the print area will change with this kit installation. Now we can turn on the printer and check if all the hot end components are working correctly. The first one to check is the hot end fan and the hot end temperature. It should read the correct temperature. Next, turn the layer cooling fan on and off to check if it's working correctly. And then raise the nozzle temperature to check if the heater is also working correctly. If you have a leveling sensor, don't forget to test it as well and also adjust the Z offset before running your first print. If you don't have a leveling sensor, make sure you check your nozzle height and adjust the bed or Z end stop switch if needed. Also, don't forget to always turn the printer off before changing tool heads. We have set up several different options on our spare mobile plates for different applications. This one includes a direct drive hot end with a metal dual gear extruder, pancake stepper motor and a touch leveling sensor. When installing different setups on the mutant plates, some of the wires might have different colors. It's very important that you know which ones are polarity sensitive and connect them correctly. Again, this is how we swap between the stock setup and the new setup. First, we disconnect the PTFE2 from the extruder side, pull the lever to unlock the mobile plate and take the plate out. Then we slide in the new plate and lock it. And since this new head is a direct drive system, we don't have to connect the PTFE2. All we need to do is connect the extruder stepper motor cable and it's ready. It's super fast and easy and done. And these are the other setups we have installed. A cakewalk extruder for food printing, a dial gauge for bed leveling, a laser module for laser engraving, and a dedicated plate just to test new hotends. It's also possible to install an Hemera hotend but in this case, the holes on the plate do not match the Hermera fixing nut positions. For this particular case, there is an adapter plate we can print to install the Hermera on the mutant plate. The system works great, and it's an awesome way to quickly convert your machine between different setups. In our case, it's a great solution to easily install and test new hotends or hotend components. When installing different head setups, like this one for example, you might also need to make a few changes in your printer settings, such as the leveling sensor X and Y offsets, home offsets, print area, or even the type of thermistor if you are using a different one. On most 32-bit boards, the firmware update is very easy to do. 
Since you only need to copy the compiled firmware to a memory card, place it in the printer's memory card slot and turn the printer on. With this in mind, if you need to change the printer's configuration after a head swap, it's much easier to just have a copy of the compiled firmware for each head and update the firmware when swapping heads. And that's it you guys, hope you liked the video, we will see you guys next time. Bye!